Okay, welcome. Today we're looking at increasing and decreasing functions. And this is something you've probably got an idea of how it works already. So I've got an example here of an increasing function where the graph is always going up and also a decreasing function where the graph is always going down. And we typically think about these uh, properties in an interval. So we're looking here at the interval AB. So that's kind of the general idea. How do we write that down mathematically uh, in a way that's rigorous? So the way we do that is we consider any two points in this region. Let's say this one is x1 and this one here. This corresponds to the x value being x2. And then what we do is we look at the output of this function. So this is the output. I can call it y1, uh, y2. Then because this graph is increasing, the second output value is always going to be higher because as we move forward in time, the graph always goes up. So this is kind of how we think about it more rigorously. And then the same for decreasing function. If I take two points x1 and, I don't know, x2, then the output, the second output is always lower. So this one and then this one. So let me just write that down mathematically. So if we take two points, if x1 is less than x2 in AB, because we're kind of just considering these properties in this interval, then if it's increasing, then we must have then the outputs, which we're saying, I'm just going to call it f x1 here. It's a bit messy. f of x1. Then this is less than, strictly less than, f of x2. So one thing to note here is since we have a strict inequality, sometimes this property is called strictly increasing. Um, this is in contrast to another property where it's non-strictly increasing, where instead of this sign, we have a greater than or equal sign. And then you can kind of have regions where the curve is flat. But for this, we're just looking at strictly increasing functions where it's always going up. So let's do the same for uh, decreasing functions. So it's kind of, it's very similar. So if x1 is less than x2, again, we take two points in the interval a, b, then, then, well, it's the same thing, but the inequality goes the other way around. So then f of x1, this is greater, strictly greater than f of x2. And so if a function satisfies this property for all points in the interval, that's how we define it to be decreasing in that interval. Okay, so that's like the definition. I also want to talk about an equivalent way of thinking about this. So if you're familiar with differentiation and gradients, then you know if you take the derivative of a function, it's gonna give you the gradient of the tangent. And so if this gradient is always positive, then we know that the function would be increasing because the function will always be tending upwards. So that's like an equivalent way of thinking about it. And then similarly, if it's decreasing, then the tangent, the gradient of the tangent is always going to be negative. So I'm just going to write down here, this is equivalent to f dashed for the derivative of f, f dashed of x. This is always strictly positive for x, um, x in the interval a, b. And then for decreasing, this is equivalent to saying, in terms of derivatives, f dashed of x, this is strictly less than zero uh, for x in the interval a, b again. So the reason why these conditions are really nice and in some way better is because we can actually test them. So if we're given a function, we can differentiate it and we can find when it's negative or positive. Whereas this definition, we can't really test it for every single pair of points on, in AB. This is kind of just a very abstract definition, whereas this is something we can test. So now we're just going to look at a couple examples just to make sure we understand this. Okay, for our first example, we're given this function, which is a cubic, so x cubed plus 24x plus 3. And we need to kind of find out if it's increasing or decreasing and whereabouts it that happens. So remember from what we were saying earlier, we could test this by finding its derivative. So first, we differentiate this function f dash of x, and to do that, we just bring down the power, so the 3 comes to the front, and we reduce the power by 1, and then this comes 2. So that's just a general rule, and then this goes to 24, and the constant Spanish. So this is the derivative, and now what do you notice? We have this positive constant, we have a positive constant here, and we've also got this term x squared. Now this is always going to be non-negative, and since we have a positive constant, this whole derivative this is always strictly positive for all x. So uh, I'll just write for all x in the real line. Now, if you remember from before, this tells us that this function is always increasing. So I could 
uh, draw a very, very rough sketch here. I've got no idea what it looks like, but maybe something like that. So it's always tending upwards. So now let's look at another example. It's going to be similar. We're given this function f of x, which is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x. And now this question is to find out when f is decreasing. And we're not actually going to have it decreasing for all values of x. We just need to find which interval it's decreasing for. So the strategy is the same. We just differentiate it. f dashed of x. This is 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. So to find when it's decreasing, we need to kind of set this um, function to be less than zero. So I'm just going to write, so strictly less than zero. And then if we can solve this inequality, then this gives us when, what values of x this function is decreasing. So notice that all these terms are a multiple of three. So I can just start off by uh, dividing through by three. This gives us x squared plus 2x minus 3 is less than 0. And now this is a quadratic. And we can actually uh, kind of think about setting this equal to 0 and finding the critical points. So first, I'm just going to factorize this quadratic. And this comes out as x plus 3 and x minus 1. So this is less than 0. Now, I'm just going to write underneath here when these brackets are 0. This is going to be useful. So this is when x equals minus 3 and when x equals 1, just setting these brackets equal to 0. Now, this doesn't give us the solutions, obviously, but it gives us the critical points. So these are sometimes called critical points. And this will help us find when this um, quadratic is less than 0. So now to do this, we want to actually sketch this quadratic. So I'm just going to draw the xy plane here. And then to do this, we need the critical points because they tell us when this function crosses the x-axis. And this is when x equals minus 3 and when x equals 1. This is very rough. But then we have a positive quadratic. It's tending upwards. So the shape is going to be roughly like this. And then we can see exactly when this quadratic is negative, when um, the output is below the x-axis. And it's just in this interval here. This is when x is between minus 3 and 1. So it tells us, if I just go over here, it tells us the solution of this inequality is when x is strictly less than 1 and strictly bigger than minus 3. And this, remember, this is what we're solving for, for when the derivative is negative. This is exactly when this function is decreasing. And in fact, it's not going to be decreasing anywhere else. So I hope this video gave you a bit more of an understanding of how we define increasing decreasing functions and how to really test when these functions are increasing or decreasing.